This is Paint Life TV. I'm Christy Idaho Painter. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks how we go about masking cabinets to paint them with an airless sprayer or HVLP sprayer. So if you want some tips, tricks, masking, stay tuned for this video. All right, now we've got our cabinet right here. I'm going to give you some tips or tricks, what tape I use, um, the mask I use and stuff like that, how we go about paint or masking these cabinets off to keep overspray out of the inside. How do you keep overspray off your cabinet or off your cabinet or your appliances, off your floor and everything else you don't want paint on. We're gonna be spraying with an HVLP and an, an airless sprayer. We're gonna talk about the differences between those after this video, but this is all about masking. And so we're gonna show you how we mask off where the drawers go on the face frames, where a door goes on a face frame, even a drawer that can't, drawer front that can't come off of a drawer. We're gonna show you that. When I typically mask, when I'm doing cabinets, I'm gonna use either a production tape. I like frog tape, orange, um, production grade tape or I like frog tape production grade blue tape and these two tapes are excellent for um, masking. This one can stay on a lot longer. If you're gonna be masking your cabinets and leaving your tape on, this is gonna be able to stay on there significantly longer and it'll come off a lot easier than a production tape. So if you're gonna be uh, leaving it on more than three days, don't use an orange production tape. This is the three day release tape. So I'm gonna get ready here. We do have um, delicate surface tape from Frog Tape. I'm not gonna be using that on uh, this job. We also do use orange tape if we want to keep any bleeding off of floors and stuff the blue tape comes um, packaged in multi packs doesn't have individual packing so it's a little less expensive than your green um, tape with premium paper but they both have paint block technology on the edge that swells up and doesn't allow anything liquid to bleed underneath the tape but now we'll start on and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks masking the boxes right here, the face frames. And when I'm masking the face frames, I'm always using a inch and a half tape or larger. You can use larger, but then it's gonna cost significantly more money. There's a big savings in tape if you can use inch and a half or smaller tape. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, don't forget hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we come out with a new video. It's free, simple, and easy to do. It's never costed you a dime in 12 years and it will never cost you a dime in the future. It's just a simple way to help support our channel. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, um, and you'll be subscribed. On with masking a box. So now I'm gonna be going to be masking where one of the drawers is. I'm gonna be taking tape right here and I'm going to be putting my tape inside my drawer front and I'm going to be masking it just like this sticking the tape to the back side of my opening right here and this is what your paper is going to stick to is the tape that is facing you right here so it's going to be tearing off links proximate links stick it behind now I actually have the luxury of you know, working with a cabinet I could reach over the top of right here because this is a cabinet we pulled out of a bathroom that we're doing a remodel on and cabinet makeover remodel. We're taking a oak cabinet and $25 oak cabinet and turning it into a $500 oak cabinet. So it's going to look just like that. So I'm going to do that with all my openings. And I, once again, I can use blue. You can use inch and a half tape or one inch tape, but it doesn't give you as much room for air when you're putting your paper. I'm going to be putting paper over the face of that. So you don't have, you can do the same thing with one inch. It's just this gives you a lot more adhesive surface to play with when you're putting your paper on. So I can stick this up inside here. Because you want to get make sure you have enough on the backing so when you push on that or when you're spraying, it doesn't push your paper tape off. All right, I'm gonna start masking the drawer guide that has, or the, the drawer front that has a guide on it. So I'm going to put masking right over the 
face of this guide right here so I don't get any overspray on the roller itself. Now I can put my masking behind there. And once you've done this long enough, you'll get pretty fast at doing it. So when I get to the bottom down here, I'm going to mask along my edge right here. I don't want anything bleeding onto my surface right here of the cabinet. So I'm going to mask that nice and tight to make sure we get a nice crisp line there. All right, so I got to all my face frames all masked for my drawer fronts right now. Now I'm going to take and cover them with paper. I'm going to use paper to cover it up. Show you how I go about doing that. It's going to stick right to the face and the paper is going to stick just like that. Now I'm going to flip this up. And that'll stick just like that to my face. Now I can fill it in. I can use, if I want to use production tape, I can take and fill it in with production tape. If I'm tr really conscious about trying to save money, I can just use, you know, um, one inch production tape. Just to make sure I don't have any leaks or holes there. You can even take, switch out to blue, put production tape on this portion of it and just use one inch to save yourself some money. When you start masking off a lot of boxes, it could save you could save you a little bit of money. Just take your time, measure it out. Don't get too far. If you're short a little bit, that's where you can just put a piece of tape that'll stick to the face of that adhesive and cover that leak. Same right here. That would be a leak right there. Easy to fill that in just like that. Come down to the bottom where we got our masking line along the bottom. There we go. Now that's all masked off, ready to go. And one of the tips when I'm spraying this, we're typically using an HVLP sprayer at about 4.5 PSI. So really, really low pressure. If you're spraying with an airless sprayer, there's a lot more force on this masking. You definitely want to make sure it's pretty tight. And if you're using an air sprayer, if there's any leaks, it's going to throw way more paint inside there. So you definitely want to make sure your masking is really tight and leak proof if you're spraying with an airless sprayer. And try to spray at the lowest PSI you can if you're using an airless sprayer so you're not putting so much force on your masking. All right, now I'm going to show you how we mask typically where the doors are because they're significantly taller and our paper won't reach that gap and we don't want to have to put masking in the middle which makes kind of a weak spot. So we mask with plastic and I'm going to show you how to do that with plastic. All right, now I'm going to mask off my opening. I'm going to start by just putting I'm masking down on the bottom and masking off the white 
melamine here first because I don't want any paint bleeding onto my white melamine. Throw a piece of masking down there first. All right, now I've got my masker set up with my film right here and one inch tapes. I'm gonna do the same thing I do with the paper. Just gonna measure out my plastic right here. Tear it, set it. Get in place, now I'm just gonna roll my plastic down. Pack it to your adhesive. You can make sure I don't have any leaks along here. This flap, we want to just take and tack that down. Just like that. If I was you know, unsure if anything was gonna leak along that edge, I can take, just throw some masking along that edge. That's gonna guard against any leaks on both sides. Just like that. All right, now I'm gonna mask over the top because I don't want any overspray going inside of our cabinet. There we go, we're gonna be spraying the sides of it and now we're good to go. So you could run into a scenario where your faces of your boxes are glued on there or screwed on there or nailed on there some way that you can't get them off. It's really rare, but we do run into that every now and then. And what we do is we just paint the boxes themselves just standing up like this, but we don't wanna get any paint or overspray inside the box. This one actually screws on, so we would just act like the door is still on. All right, now in order to mask this box, I'm just going to take Just wrap my masking around the entire box. Just start from the bottom. I got one more row of masking. Like this. Now that box would be standing up just like this. The door front would be on this box. And now I can spray this box right here just like that. And all the overspray is gonna carry down this thing overlapping like this. You're not gonna get any overspray inside your box. If you were spraying the back sides of these doors, you would flip this over. You would spray the back side first right here. Let that set up, flip it over. Now you spray the top and the front and you're not gonna get any overspray over. That's what it looks like spraying the drawers, the boxes, if the fronts do not come off. 
So now if you, if, if this cabinet, if these were cabinets inside of a kitchen, we're also going to be masking the floor off. I do have um, floor shell. We do use um, X-board is probably the most common uh, um, covering we put down on floors to protect the floors because nothing will absorb through it. It's actually waterproof and we'll run our X board up to our kick plate and then we'll typically mask it with blue frog tape because we don't want anything bleeding underneath that. And we can show you some B-roll of a job that we've um, done recently with that. So we'd be masking off the floors, wrapping blue frog tape all the way around. And if you're using lacquers, the blue frog tape or green frog tape will have a tendency to curl up when you spray it. If you're spraying multiple coats, every time you spray another coat, you want to take and run your fingers over that masking um, because it does curl up. So you want to push it back down right before you spray. So a mask, um, use frog tape. You don't want to use production tape. The frog tape blue and the frog tape green have the paint block technology that swells up that doesn't allow anything to bleed underneath. So you don't want to get any um, bleeding underneath on hardwood floors or tile or anything like that. So you don't want to use your production tape on the floor. And you also um, don't want to peel up your flooring, the coating on the floor and stuff like that if it's hardwood. So you don't want to ever put production tape on a hardwood floor. Now, you may also run into some appliances that need to be masked off because you can't remove them. We typically like to remove the appliances. Sometimes you cannot. So we'll mask those appliances off in place like a dishwasher, a refrigerator, um, a microwave. Usually we won't remove those. So you might run into a scenario like that. We'll show you what it looks like to um, you know, mask around a, a refrigerator. We use plastic, cover it up with plastic and get it in there, you know, as deep as we can, like on a refrigerator, open the door on a, uh, a dishwasher and mask, you know, inside as deep as we can in those cabinets. It's always best to remove appliances if you can. There are scenarios you're going to run into here and there where you just cannot, or there's way too much liability, you know, removing them from scratching floors, um, tearing vinyl, stuff like that. Or even we've run into pulling refrigerators out and, um, the ice makers begin leaking and that's a big liability moving a refrigerator out. We typically ask for the clients or customers to have those appliances removed um, prior to us getting there to doing the cabinet job. If you got any questions or comments, you know, about how we go about masking um, the products we're using, just leave it in the comments section below. Uh, we'll try to answer those questions. Uh, the masking process, you usually goes you usually goes fairly fast and once you learn how to do a few boxes it's going to go fairly quick it does look like it would take you an eternity to do a whole kitchen but to mask off a whole kitchen i can mask off an average size kitchen by myself uh, in probably about an hour and a half is all it's going to take you know to do all the masking of all the boxes and everything it's a very simple process you definitely want to have a masker this is an essential tool you definitely want to use frog tape so you don't get any bleeding you definitely want to use a tape that can stay on there for multiple days um, and that's going to come off really easy when you want it to come off like a 21 day release tape so versus a three day release production tape um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel don't forget hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell we've got this whole cabinet series we're working on if you want to see the painting process of this how we go about painting it i'm going to talk about uh, products, um, what we're going to be using on this cabinet. I think I'm going to be testing out Benjamin Moore Advance for the first time ever. If you want to see that, does it spray out of an HVLP sprayer? Does it uh, spray out of an airless sprayer? Well, we're going to put it to the test. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. We'll see you on the next video. Out.